Well, good afternoon. This is a public hearing held by the Connecticut Department of Public Health concerning an appeal of a discharge notice received by the department on like October 31st, 2024. Uh, this hearing is being held pursuant to Section 19A, 535A of the general statutes. My name is Aidan Baum, and I have been designated as the hearing officer. I will rule on all motions, uh, determine findings of fact and conclusions of law, and then issue an order. Uh, first, for the purpose of the record, uh, I note that this hearing is held over Microsoft Teams on Monday, November 12th, and the current time is 2.03 p.m. I will have all parties identify themselves and their position, starting with uh, for the resident. Uh, good afternoon, Vincenzo Gallo, the conservator uh, for Mr. Latella. And for the facility? Philip Murata, owner. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Murata, you are not an attorney, correct? Correct. All right. As you are not an attorney, uh, you may uh, testify as a witness um, in this case, but you may not make legal arguments or cross examine witnesses or in, uh, in any way engage in the practice of law on uh, behalf of Green Grove. Do you understand why? Yes. Okay. So today, this is what's going to happen. Uh, the, the facility must prove by a preponderance of the evidence that it has complied with the provisions of General Statutes 19A, 535A. Based on what transpires at the hearing today, then I will issue an order. The purpose of today's hearing is to provide an opportunity to present evidence in the matters raised in the discharge notice to determine if the discharge at issue uh, should be vacated or affirmed. And the specific issue in this case is whether there is sufficient evidence to conclude that the facility has complied with the provisions of General Statute Section 19A, 535A. I will now mark and enter some documents into the record. I'm going to mark record exhibits first. These are being entered now for identification only. Uh, Mr. Gallo, if you object to any of these documents, please do so when appropriate. Um, if there are no objections, they will be marked as full exhibits. Now, before I, I uh, continue, um, if you have not had an opportunity to see these uh, these documents, please let me know. Record Exhibit 1 is the Notice of Intent to Discharge dated October 23rd, 2024, that was issued by the facility to the resident on October 23rd, 2024, Record Exhibit 1. Record Exhibit 2 is the appeal of the involuntary discharge drafted by the resident October 31st, 2024. That's record exhibit two. Record exhibit three yeah. is oh. record oh, exhibit three told. is the notice of hearing scheduling a hearing in this matter for November 7th, 2024. That is dated November 1st, 2024. That's record exhibit three. Record exhibit four is an email from Mr. Vincenzo Gallo, the conservator, requesting a continuance. That's dated November 5th, 2024. And then record exhibit five is a ruling on the motion for continuance, rescheduling the hearing for today. Um, that, that ruling is dated November 6th, 2024. Uh, these are the hearing, these are that I have. Uh, Mr. Gallo, do you have any objection to any of these being entered as full exhibits? No, I do not. Thank you. Now, I note that Green Grove has also pre-filed exhibits. Um, I'd like to enter these for identification purposes only. Again, Mr. Gallo, if you object to any of these documents, please do so when appropriate. Facility A. Are four personal statements, two of them dated November 5th. Um, I'm going to steal page four of this document because it contains a private medical information. That's facility A, page four sealed. Facility B is our uh, incident log excerpts between July 11th and September 13th of this year. That's facility B. And then finally, facility C, our resident council meeting notes dated May 8th 
2024 through uh, September 11th, 2024. Mr. Gallo, any objections to these documents being entered as full exhibits? Uh, no objection, no. Thank you. All right, as I said before, Green Grove has the burden of proof in this matter that it has complied with the provisions of Section 19A, 535A of the General Statutes. Um, at this time, I'd like to swear in uh, the witness for Green Grove. That's Mr. Moretta, I believe, um, unless uh, somebody else wants to testify for Green Grove. I had a few questions for your facility. Go ahead. All right, well, I'd like to swear you in first. Can you please raise yeah. your right hand? Mm-hmm. Do you solemnly swear or solemnly and sincerely affirm, as the case may be, that the evidence you give in this case shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God or under pains and penalties of perjury? Yes. Thank you. All right, well, I'd like to turn first to the notice. That's uh, Record Exhibit 1, the Notice of Intent, of intent to Discharge. Now, this was issued by your facility October 23rd, 2024. Is that correct? Correct. All right. Now, I'm reading a 30-day notice that Green Grove intends to discharge you from the facility on Wednesday, October 23rd, 2024. Um, uh, has it, so it's been issued to the resident October 23rd, 2024, with the discharge date of October 23rd, 2024. This would appear to be at odds with a statutory requirement that to provide 30 days between the notice and discharge. Can you uh, explain this, please? Yeah, the, the dates were uh, were mistaken. I see. One of the requirements, uh, moving further in the document, one of the uh, requirements is that this notice shall include the name, mailing address, and telephone number of the state long-term care ombudsman. Um, now, I see the address, I see the phone number, um, and I don't see the name as statutorily required. Do you have an explanation? Uh, I was told to, to write uh, to be determined. For the long-term care setting? I see to be determined for the uh, long-term care setting. I'm, I'm talking about where the... he was going to be gone. Okay, I'm talking about the name of the Connecticut State Long-Term Care Ombudsman, which is by statute it requires to be placed on these notices. And I didn't see it here, and I was just wondering if you had an explanation. No explanation. I see. Uh, when did you upload this? Or I should go back. Did you upload this document? to the uh, long-term care ombudsman's online portal? That day. Same day? Okay, great. And uh, uh, moving on uh, away from this document for a moment, I saw that you had submitted submissions, uh, facility A through C. I, I didn't see anywhere in there um, any discharge plan for the resident which is prescribed by 19A-535A subsection C. Um, did Green Grove prepare such a document? And if so, when was it provided to the resident or his conservator? Well, at that point, he wasn't conserved. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the hospital is the one that said that we couldn't take him back. So that when, we, when he went, which was a month before that, I think, uh, there was no intent of him not coming back. The intent, he was coming back until the hospital said he was not able to come back. Well, I understand um, what you're saying. How does this relate to the... Uh, the discharge plan that you that you need to prepare in connection with the discharge. The hospital had the plan and they uh, had the place already picked out and everything was set until I guess uh, the family member got involved somehow. And, you know, 
stirred it up. It was all set. It was there was as a matter of fact, he's not in our facility now. He is at another facility. So I understand that it's not that you are intending to discharge him. It's that another facility uh, he was just transferred to another facility and he wishes to come back to this one. Is that what you're saying? No, no, I'm saying when he left, there was no intent of not taking him back. He was supposedly, uh, you know, going to the hospital to uh, to have his meds changed. And, you know, there was there was a, a big, long criteria of things that were going to happen. Uh, the hospital said he was not able to return to RCH and they had a place for him to go. Um, now, uh, before I move on, uh, Mr. Gallo, do you have any questions for this witness? Uh, just I had a couple questions on regarding, uh, was there a specific placement that they said they were going to send him to? Yes. And which place is that? I don't know. I, I wasn't involved in that part. I just know that it was already done. It was already done through the hospital. Uh, I mean, our operations manager knows, you know, the, do you know the place that they said? Oh. Place in New Haven. She said no. So we, so we don't know. Sorry. It was in New Haven. That's all I know. Did, did Mr. Latella have a, a rep payee or a, uh, uh, a care representative? Before no. I was appointed? No. Nope. No. Okay. Nope. Was there any, did Mr. No. Latella state that he wanted to come back? Did he think he wanted to come back? Did he ever make statements that he wanted to come back? Uh, not to me. I mean, no, he did not make any statement to me. So, he, you know, because this... because he was trying to get to the hospital and he said, you know, like, because I did speak to him maybe a week or two before he went, you know, I said, you know, do you not want to live here anymore? I mean, why do you keep wanting to leave, you know, go to the hospital? And, you know, he didn't really have an answer. But there's no, there's no discharge to a different facility. It was the hospital stating that he, he would need rehab. Is that correct? No, no, it wasn't rehab. It was, you know, he, you know, like, in other words, you say in rehab and I, maybe I'm just, uh, you know, ignorant or whatever the case may be, but, uh, it's not a case of, you know, he had a, a bum leg and he got it fixed. He, I don't know why they say, they keep saying rehab. In other words, he needed, mental. he needed, uh, it was a mental health issue. It wasn't uh, a, 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 an arm, a leg, you know, a rehab issue. I I mean, I, maybe layman's terms, I don't know what I'm talking about, but it's, you're making it sound like he just had to go for rehab. I don't have maybe the nurse can questions. maybe the nurse can elaborate on this because I really don't know exactly what I'm trying to say, but um no, I, I, I don't have any further questions, right? All right. Uh Mr. 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 Gallo. May, may I say yes, hi. This, I was no thank you. During the I'm James's Ms. Fizzi cousin. Ms. Fizzello. Mm -hmm. Uh if you're called as a witness, you'll you'll be placed under oath. Um just okay. Not at this time. Okay. Mr. Gallo, what is the in, what is the, uh, the the resident's desire here? What is the intent? What is your position? Um, so his his intent is to go back to Green Grove. There is a uh, money follows a person plan that we are trying to get him back into the community. Uh, he was discharged to a rehab facility. The plan is to go back to Green Grove and possibly get him money follows a person to, into an apartment in the community. Potentially. Okay, so uh, that there was no. We do object based on I never got service of uh, or notice of uh, until I was revised from Ms. Vizello, uh Joanne, and we do object because we do need time for him to to have new placement uh, in place. All right, so I understand if nothing happens, he's going to be returning to Green Grove at the end of his stay at this. Uh, the rehab facility is that correct that's my understanding yes 
All right. And uh, Mr. Moretta, uh, Greengrove wishes to discharge him and have him not come back from this facility to this facility. Is that correct? Correct. Who who is looking out for his safety? If we aren't supposed to, I mean, I don't understand. Why do they want him to come back when he was deemed not able to come back to Green Grove? He can't be kept safe. Well, yeah, I I, un I understand your position. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think so. But be before we can explore the merits of this case, let me just enumerate some of the problems I have right now. I can't allow a discharge to happen unless it is by statute. And this discharge notice is deficient in a few ways. So before we even get to the merits of this case, the discharge notice would need to be rectified. Um, the discharge notice did not provide the 30 days between notice and discharge. You said there was a mistake with the dates. Well, it's a legally significant mistake. Um, there needs to be a 30 days between it, it is issued and, and it says that the discharge will be affected. At least. It could be longer than that, but it has to be at least 30 days. I hear somebody mumbling in the background back there. Um, please stop. The discharge notice, while it contains the address and the telephone number of the state long-term care and budspin, it does not have the names required by statute. Now, I know this is nitpicky, but it is a requirement. The discharge plan um, uh, was not submitted to me. I see no discharge plan. Um, uh, as required by the statute, I need, to I need to see this. I need to see what is the plan. If, you're if he can't come back to Green Grove, where is he going to go? I see to be determined. And that doesn't, that doesn't uh, com meet the very low bar that is required by the statute. So uh, I, I can't see a way to even explore the merits of this case without, um, without rectifying these issues. So I'll, uh, uh, before we go further, I just have to sustain the appeal on, the, on these grounds alone. And I now I, I see two paths moving forward here. Now, I, I can draft a decision to this effect that uh, to sustain this appeal. It will take a few weeks. Um, and any discharge or any action uh, would be stayed until the decision is issued. Or you can withdraw this notice. Green Grove can withdraw this notice and uh, reissue one. And uh, the a discharge notice would be, or I should say, a withdrawal notice by my office will be sent to the parties either today or tomorrow. Um, at, at which case, you can you can try again. You can issue another notice that does comply. Um, with the dates fixed, with the name of the state long-term care ombudsman added, um, with a discharge plan that says exactly where he would be going if you if you discharge him, um, and then at that point, uh, we might be able to discuss the merits of this case. But as it as it pertains now, I, I'm going to sustain this appeal just on the grounds of a deficient notice. Do you understand, Mr. Moreta? Yes. And Mr. Gallo, do you have any questions? No, oh, thank you very much. Okay. Um, Mr. Moreta, uh, how would you like to proceed? Would you like to withdraw this notice or do you want my office to issue a written decision, which it, it, it'll take a few weeks? Withdraw. I see, all right. Um, in that case, uh, my office will uh, issue a withdrawal notice either today or tomorrow. I think more likely because it's the end of the day. It's nearing the end of the day already today. Probably go out in the mail tomorrow, um, and uh, you'll you'll have it probably maybe an email tomorrow afternoon. Um, and uh, I, I I think I'll likely see uh, these parties again. Um, but uh, I I wish you all the best of luck until then in hopefully finding a way to resolve this. Uh, before it comes back to my office. But if not, then we'll see each other again in a few weeks. Thank you very much. All right. Um, I'm adjourning this hearing and going off the record. Ms. Walker, you could stop the recording.